We're here with another field test. Today we're going to get a little more in-depth with arrow weight and trajectory and more uh, specifically variable arrow weight and trajectory. Check it out. <laughs> the weight of your arrow affect your trajectory downrange. What I've done today for today's test, I've got three different weight arrows. I'm going to zero in my lightest weight arrow at 40 and shoot an arrow that's 20 and 25 grains heavier, see how they fall. And then I'm going to go back to 50 and do the same test and repeat. Now this is only going to apply to my specific setup um, with my weight of arrows. As you go heavy in arrow weight or lighter in arrow weight, your trajectory is going to be slightly different. But at the end of the day, it's just proof to, to show you that, uh, you know, if you have inconsistencies in your arrow weight, whether you, you develop those inconsistencies when you're building your arrows, or uh, be it that you absorb water in your setup, or whatever the variable may be, if your arrows aren't consistently weighing the same, and if they don't weigh in to what you sighted into, we're going to show you a little bit of trajectory and, and how it, uh, it impacts your setup. I just shot my first round of arrows, 40 yards. Uh, like I said, three different arrow weights, and we're going to go down and measure to see exactly where our fall is. And just want to clarify, the first group of arrows that I zeroed in was 405 grains per arrow. The second group of arrows is 418 grains per arrow. And the third group of arrows is 425 grains. So again, we've got uh, 13 grains and uh, 15 grains, or 20 grains, excuse me, different in arrow weight with our different uh, groups. So we're going to go down and see where they are and get a measurement. So we're down at the target now. Um, and you can see the, the two arrows we zeroed in at 40 were on the, on the tape line here. And then the 418 grain arrows are a few inches below it and the 425 a little bit below it yet. So from center tape line, we are about three inches for the first group and an average, I would say, of roughly five inches for the second group. And again, that's a 40 yard uh, shot distance there. From this group to this group, obviously 20 grains is pretty substantial. You'd have to screw up with your tip size or something to mess up that bad. Um, this is a little bit more realistic and this is another uh, realistic depiction of two inches um, with just a few grains of, of difference in arrow weight like we talked in the first video with water. So what we're going to back up to 50 and see how it affects you there. Now will this really affect you at 30 yards and in? Maybe not enough to make a difference depending on the size of your animal. But at the end of the day this is just to show you that some guys that pull dif two different arrows out of their quiver and shoot them and, and they don't know because they've never weighed them. They hope for the best and they think that they're grouping sometimes. This is, this is just a, a little bit of a, a depiction and one, one example, I should say, of how arrow weight is going to affect you. And the further back we get, the more dramatic it's going to be. So we're going to go to 50 now and show you those results. So we're here at 50 yards now with the group that I shot. And we're a little bit low of the line at 50 with our zero group. But what I'm going to do is just measure from there down and get us our, our drop. So um, we are roughly six inches a drop now from the first group to the second group and that's 13 grains difference in arrow weight in the second group we're about seven and a half inches seven and three eighths of an inch uh, low from the first group and that's 20 grains difference so just goes to show you at 50 yards this is the discrepancy we see now whether you've got inconsistencies in your arrow weight whether it's through construction of your arrows uh, shooting different points when you, you know, maybe you want to have a couple different type of broadheads in your quiver and they don't exactly weigh out to be the same. You know, add into the effect if, if you get a, a rainy weekend like, like I tested in the last video, you know, you start to add all those factors together and you start to get that spread in, in, ver in the consistency of the arrow weight. So this is just a little test with my bow, the Defiant 34, like I said, it's about 73 pounds shooting the arrow speeds were between 280s, the, the, high, the low 280s and the low 290s with the different arrow weights. And his, this is what I got at 50. So you take this out to 60, 70, 80, 90 yards and you want to be consistent. You know, if, if you're not consistent with your arrow weight and you're, you're building of your arrows and you know, you take into effect weather, uh, all those things are going to limit your effective range and start to push it further in. You know, if, if you're shooting again 30 yards and in, 
maybe not a big deal. You know, maybe even 40 yards, it's not enough to be uh, an issue for you. But when you start stretching that out, then you start to see the, the difference in impact. So hope you enjoyed this video. We're going to be bringing more field tests in the future with just, you know, different variables and scenarios you can encounter in the field in a bow hunting situation. Once again, if you like this video and our, our videos, please subscribe and leave a comment. You know, we're always interested in hearing your feedback. And also, you know, if you've got an idea for another test you want to see us put together, let us know. Thanks again for checking it out.